Yeah. Ball Like the Seas with Michael Christmas is track six. So first of all, I got to the point in the album, which always happens to me, that I'm like, what else can I make to fit the album? And then I like get too focused on making something to fit the mold and I'm not like just expressing myself anymore. So I took a break for a while. I did some shit with my boys from New York. Shout out to season seven. And this is like the only time really that I use a, a tight beat for an album, but I was like, I just want to rap. So I pulled this like Asher Roth, Chance the Rapper type beat off YouTube. And then I was like, wait, this is actually pretty fire. I think it would like lighten the mood a little bit if I put it on the album. The hook alludes to playing basketball, which is a big part of my childhood, so it also fit in a way. Me personally, whenever I was just trying to like run from some shit or like not worry about anything, I would just go shoot hoops. So that's what it meant to me. But, so it's the Celtics. Ball Like the Seas, uh, Celtics, yeah. So, Ball Like the Seas, I had that. I sent it to Michael Christmas. Super fire verse, did a good job. It was also cool because the, the song like is referential to the Celtics, who I'm a fan of, and he's from Boston. Yeah, there's really not anything too crazy to that song. I There's some audio at the beginning. If you listen closely, you can hear like basketballs bouncing. You can hear me hop out of the car and say, you guys want to run threes? The, the sound on the hook is the same as most of the other songs where I just sang it like 10 times and layered it so it sounds like a crowd. But. Stupid for you is after that. Super for you is a banger. So the transition there was kind of just to me like balling in the summer. And then I remember like some of the same times I was, I was playing the most basketball was like times you're falling in love for the first time and doing all that summer shit. So stupid for you is about going on a date with like your first love is basically what it's about. Um, which I felt just kind of, I felt kind of whack writing the song to be honest, because it happened so long ago. But sometimes when you look back on things, you have a level of clarity that you like could not have written when it was happening. Is there more of a specific story there you want to get into? Yeah, this girl, I don't know how much of this we're gonna put in because it's mad personal, but th uh, this girl. <laughs> so that was just about like how crazy that experience was and just like what it's like falling for a girl in the summer. Like what the, what the feeling is there. Yeah. So going in, so you had a girlfriend going to college. Yeah. And that's where Jack and Jill came in was, that was a long time after we broke up. I was in, actually, that's one of the songs that I have a crazy story. Oh, fuck, we can't move on yet. We can't move on yet. Uh, Stupid For You, I, I actually should probably play it for you at some point. The original demo of Stupid For You does not sound like the, the final version at all. Like, I'll probably cut in some audio of the demo or something. It was very sad. Baby, I'm stupid. Because it was like, the true lens of it was like me thinking about like one of the happiest moments of my childhood when you when you like first meet a girl that you hit it off with. Yeah. But I was thinking about it in a way that, that's like, I'm just stuck in my house doing nothing like alone right now, you know? So it's like opposite things. So I made the beat for that one. It was like a kind of a slow, like really reflective, kind of like melancholy thing. And I was like, this isn't the role I want it to play in the album. Like it, I want it to actually, it's a happy experience. So I'm gonna keep the lyrics and, and sound like I actually like had a good time, you know? So I, that's when I hit up David, DG Zip, shout out to him, dope producer that I met through one of my friends, Sean Katz. Um, he had slid me this beat where he was playing a bunch of guitar and stuff. And I felt like it was so much more fitting. So I redid the song on that beat. And that was the version that made the album. So yeah, there's a whole like separate alternate cool. thing, yeah. Jack and Jill, that one's a really weird story. So uh, me and John uh, Sutz and a bunch of our other friends were in Florida. So way after me and this girl had been done. Yeah, about a year. So we had been like partying on the beach and, and like going to clubs. We kind of settled down on the second half of the trip and we were staying at my friend Max's grandma's place. Me and John had the portable mic. So we went out on the back porch and recorded some shit. We did, I tried. I just fucked around and said who don't success. You ain't listen. I tried, I tried, I tried, I tried. And then I did the hook for Jack and Joe. I don't know why I was so sad on vacation. When I went home and rented that studio with Jimmy, I finished it. And now we have Jack and Joe, which is just about breaking up with a girl and just 
being on your own for a while and just missing not being on your own. My favorite lyric from that, I think, and maybe from the whole album, is uh, I'm sitting outside trying to wish on a star that the colors of my life stop pulling apart and I'm acting just like I don't know who you are to get by. So that was just like, sometimes when you're just mad lonely, like you just reflect on things that like, it's good that they're over, but like you think about them the wrong way. Like I, yeah. I wish I still had that. So, you know, the whole verse is just like, there's there's also that lyric that's like, um, when I roll by your block, see me riding the brake, make the wonder boy wonder if he made a mistake. So like me just being like a hot shot and doing all this rap shit and being a kid, but then like realizing like maybe I fucked up. Like, I made a mistake and I don't know it's 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 a heavy shit about like things that really were not that heavy but I don't know the song came out good people like it <laughs> yeah I mean, yeah that's facts all of the songs were made in quarantine except that one but I had been sitting on it being like I'm not gonna put this on a project till I'm like talking about my life yeah. So after that was Brain on Fire. When it goes from stupid for you to Jack and Jill is when it starts to get really like, oh, we're not like kids anymore. It's cause like some real shit happens. And then after that, like something like a breakup can kind of fuck with your confidence. And I'm not saying that's what caused it, but like that was when I feel like in college a little bit, I started to like, I didn't have the sense of security. And when you lose that false sense of security, like you have to like face the fact of like what you're doing in your own life by yourself. I don't know, man. I just didn't, I was mad anxious like for the first half of college. And Brain on Fire is just about, I was just chilling with my friend Wyatt, who's still one of my best friends. And we were just hanging on his car not doing anything crazy. And then I was just like, I had this weird sensation that I was on top of the world, but like not in a good way. Like I was gonna like fall. You know what I'm saying? Like I was like, yo, I don't know what happens next. Like I'm at the front of this shit. Like the future is like not there yet. Like I'm, it was like a scary thing. It was really weird. So that's what the hook is about. When I'm like, I'm on the top of the world. It's too bad you're on top of the world and you're trying not to fall head first. So it's like, instead of just enjoying being in the moment, you're just worried about like where you're going or where you just were is, is what it's about. Just the whole song is just overthinking everything is the, is the point. So yeah, thank you. Uh, yeah, no, exactly. You know, when people with really bad anxiety, which by the way, I don't have really bad anxiety. They say like, they think that everyone hates them when there's nothing like that going on. Like it's that type of shit. In the verse, you can hear that shit when, with the high pitched and low pitched voices. It's like, you know, just things that like aren't really there that are bothering you. Um.